We did get lucky that we started out fairly strong, aside from our first brunch. That's the only like oh negative Oh my gosh, I thought that was going to break us. Oh gosh, our first brunch uh, did not go as planned. No. And, you know, we got some negative reviews. Anybody who said anything nice was being polite. Yeah, um, it but, was bad. But since, they, I mean, we literally pivoted in the next week. We did better and we haven't had an issue since. We're back. It's the Best in London, Texas podcast. Listen. Do you want to start a bar? Do you want to own a bar? Of course you do. That's everybody's dream. So and we have Ryan and Ashton Hooper here today, uh, bar owners. Hi. We'll put that out there. <laughs> um, thanks for coming in. Uh, so let's just sort of jump right into it. You own two businesses, Hops and Bubbles, and you own Hoop and Barrel. So uh, H&B in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Hops and Bubbles is a mobile bartending business. Yes, like, Let's talk a little bit about your background. Are you are you bartenders by trade? Um you know, I just, I guess, I don't know, somewhere in the mid-2000s or so, I was just jumping around little crap jobs and 19 years old, and my buddies were like, hey, uh, make way more money serving. So I went to Abuelo's and uh, ended up spending a, a third of my life there, um, the majority of it bartending. Um, but even then, a lot of that was just like, you know, pulling drinks out of my ass, just super sweet stuff, <laughs> things that, you know, people, you know, most people liked. Um, and I, but I, I enjoyed the bartending aspect of it. I just, I loved the, I love the pace whenever you're just getting your ass kicked on a Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. Um, and I really just enjoy that. I, I don't know, I kind of found a niche in that. And then um, after I left the service industry, I uh, went out to, you know, help my dad with his oil company Um, and for the first time I had nights off and was getting really bored. (laughs) So I started, uh, picking up shifts at Green Tree Country Club and then, um, turned into, um, my buddy Will and Erica over at Blue Door needed some help over there. So I started helping out over there and that's really where I guess you'd say kind of cut my teeth and learned about like actual good drinks, craft cocktails, beers that were not Bud Light, um, you know what I mean, and, you know, higher-end stuff. What about you, Ashton? I had zero experience. No bartending experience? Nope. The first, the soft opening was my first time that I bartended. (laughs) Of of the bar? Of Of the the bar. bar. We had a soft opening, and he was showing me how, he showed me how to make an old-fashioned for the first time. And then I'm just a fast learner, and I just picked it up. Yeah. Um, and I love it. I'm not the best bartender. I don't know every, I don't know, a Vucre or anything like that, but I can learn. And yeah. I just picked it up, and well, I'm a good, like, okay, let's go over there. Let's decorate. Let's, this is where we need to go. When and how did you decide a mobile bartending service? That was definitely uh, her. <laughs> yeah. There was a, you know, <laughs> during the pandemic, um, you know, everyone's, just drinking on their back porch at two in the afternoon because there's nothing else to do. (laughs) Couldn't go anywhere. And, uh, you know, just like a lot of great ideas, probably we just, you know, oh, it'd be really cool if we did this. It'd be so cool if somebody could, you know, because we're like, I miss the blue door. I miss going to get a cocktail. You know what I mean? Like, obviously we could drink anytime we wanted, but I was like, I just miss getting a, a good cocktail. Yeah. And uh, we actually hit them up. I think they were doing a co- like cocktail kits, and they were doing gimlets. And so we got one. And Ash was like, "Well, this is what you're making me f- until we're allowed out of the house." <laughs> yeah, and so, I think I had. And he made like hundreds. Yeah, I got really I had citrus all in my <laughs> cuts and stuff. <laughs> but we, uh, um, you know, and, and she was like, "Yeah, yeah." The the idea kept repeating itself of like it'd be it really would be awesome if like someone drove up in a truck or a trailer and would yeah. serve us drinks and would do this and Let's that. Let's have a block party. And then you know. yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we you know, life starts returning somewhat to normal. And one day, I, I think actually I think she was tired of real estate. It's really what it was. Mm-hmm. And and she was like, "Okay, but really, how do we legally do this? Like, what are the ins and outs of it?" And I was just like. I guess I'll Google it. Is most of your work in catering, like at catering and events? Or, I mean, are you just going? I mean, you're not driving around hawking beers at people. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can't do it like uh, an ice cream truck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, we thought that's how it was going to be when we first started. So when we started researching, you aren't allowed to sell alcohol unless you have a brick and mortar um, or some type. So TABC will not give you a license unless you have, like, a brick and mortar. Um, oh. What else is that legal? Yeah, and anytime you're, and anytime you're, 
selling alcohol outside of that brick and mortar because, um, you know, a company or a person necess- doesn't necessarily get the license. It's actually the physical location that has mm. a, has the um, the liquor license. And when you do an offsite, like last night, we did an offsite here at the Bush Convention Center. And the way they explained to me is essentially that is an extension of your bar. Mm. And so just like in a bar where you can't bring outside alcohol in or you can't allow outside alcohol in, um, you can't allow outside alcohol in in the Bush Center yesterday, you know. Um, or it, under kind of an oddity, they mentioned, like, if we do a private party at someone's house and we're the ones that provide the alcohol, we're allowed to do it. But any existing alcohol, they actually have to remove, would technically have to remove from the house. Wow. Because it is not stamped with our TABC model. Um. Um, so that's why most private parties people, you know, do on their own. But um, the... We can do markets now that we have that. We've we've done some markets, but it was pretty much like we were just working off tips. We mm-hmm. were giving complimentary drinks, just trying to – actually, one of the first uh, events, aside from our soft opening that we did, was at the Perch. Mm-hmm. They have a monthly market every third Saturday between, March like, market. March of, yeah, um, March and October, and they um, let us do alcohol. But, yeah, we couldn't sell it. We just did tips, mm-hmm. which – Luckily, everyone was super nice and yeah. we didn't lose our asses. But like on these, um, you know, the bigger markets and stuff like that, like we have a lot of people. I mean, it's very dangerous because you don't want to, you don't want to under purchase. You know, you don't want to run out in an hour because yeah. it looks bad on you. But also, if nobody tips, then you're just, you know, you're just kind of screwed. Yeah. So luckily, we don't have to worry about that now um, with the existence. But yeah, the pr- the primary uh, focus of hops and bubbles and still is is um you know private parties we have upgraded to doing a lot of events like charity events or um oil filled um you know company christmas party holiday party that kind of thing but i'd still say like our bread and butter and the ones that we really love are inside people's homes yeah and, you know that's where she gets to shine she like <laughs> customizes and you know yes i don't i love the the big ones but you're just slanging out cokes and whiskey whiskey yeah. and cokes um but the private ones i get to put my special special touch our syrups that we make we get to make it pretty and all the girls love it i mean it's that's what i wanted um we want a great service and to provide something different to midlin this mobile bar i feel like just from what you're saying there's a lot of different avenues you could sort of go down yeah. and, and and reach yeah. right you can oh do yeah private parties you can do corporate events you can do yeah just we, showing up somebody's backyard I guess. <laughs> yeah i mean really yeah it's we thought i mean i was thinking when we were starting out i was like we're gonna we're gonna need to you know spend money to get on the knot website we're gonna yeah. need to go to wedding expos blah 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 i i think to date we've done six weddings maybe yeah and i mean really i mean and even then our first wedding wasn't until like three months into the gig and our second wasn't until eight months into it you know, it's all been, I, I think we've done w- more one-year-old birthday parties than anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. People in Midland yeah. love a reason to drink, and their kids' birthday party is, the, yeah, baby showers. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it helps that we throw in a mocktail for, like, yeah. the one person not drinking at the baby shower. <laughs> and, uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, the mom, um, I hope. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, the host. She has to make sure everything is perfect. Mom, we do say mom no shots of tequila uh, from pregnant women. That's our only stipulation. So nice. So with your with your bartending experiences, did that help in terms of pricing yourself? It helped me in in the sense that I knew all the things that we would use the most sure. you know yeah, from I mean? an inventory perspective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that you know, I, we pretty much like okay. This is what, this is, you know, if we have this kind of party, this is what it's going to cost us. You know, the way we do our stuff, our packages are based per person. And so I was like, all right, if we have, you know, 100 people, this is what it is per person. If we want to pay our bartenders. Uh, th- okay, that was one thing that did help is I know what a bartender wants to make. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. Sure. Um, right. the majority of our bartenders, uh, they well, I, all of them have other jobs. Some of them are... I would say maybe retired bartenders ish. You know, they've <laughs> moved on to the nine to five, but they still enjoy it. Um, and then the rest are active bartenders. And so, especially the active, bar- I mean, you know, the ones with the the 
like nine to five jobs, I mean, everything's icing on the cake, but mm-hmm. the ones that are working at Blue Door and Cork and Pig and uh, Tall City and stuff like that, I mean, if you're going to pull them away from a place they know they make money at, you've got to, it's got to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we had to, yeah, so we had to figure in, you know, labor and that. So we figure all that and they're like, okay, so then what do we want to make off it? Because yeah. it's like, right. we can price it this, but this at, at that point we're just like, might as well just be a nonprofit for <laughs> board bartenders, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and we, um, we started out at this much and now we've raised our prices a little bit. Of course, every year you have to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we're doing pretty well. I think at first I was like, we're never going to make money, you know? <laughs> we're just doing this for free. All I mean, we set everything up. We break down everything. We work them. I was like, we got to figure something out. And I think we're at a good place now that we kind of figured it out. You learn as you go. And that's what we're doing here and at the bar. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. That's the other thing, too, is we had this whole mentality of going to places in Midland. We got tired of paying Midland prices, but for like, you know, you know, Mata Hands quality. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a, she's from Mata Hands. I had to take a hit. Out. But yeah, I mean, but you know what I mean? Like, I was like, you know, I've got to the point in life. I don't mind paying a little bit more, but if, as long as it's good, you know, yeah. I'd rather do that and get something good. But it was like everywhere you go, it was the menu was pretty much like, oh, well, this is how much it costs because you, you live in Midland, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I didn't want to just make a certain amount of money because we could, you know. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to jack our prices up. Well, then in like six months, I'm like, okay, we kind of have to jack our prices up <laughs> because lime is limes are double what we they yeah. were when we started. Yeah. You Same. know, ice is triple than way, when we started. I mean, it, these all these different costs factored into it. And I'm like, cool. How okay? So at what point do you go? All right, what about just a f- full on bar? Like, how does that? <laughs> it know? wasn't in our five year plan because he uh, he told me. I do not ever want to open up a bar. Mm. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Famous I, last I word. <laughs> and, and oddly enough, way before that, like actually for like so long of my life, I've said I always want to, I've always wanted to open up a bar. I can't wait. I want to open a bar. I say day. that weekly. I'm, yeah. I've never even I mean, I've dreamed yeah. of it. Yeah. Like for so long, I had so many great ideas. And then when we started the mobile bar thing, I was like, no. Oh, fuck a bar. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't want to open a bar. Cause, well, because the mobile thing is so controllable. Yeah. Um, every yeah. event, you know what you're getting into. You can manage your costs really well. I mean, pretty much you're not spending money. Uh, aside from, like, the cost of, like, the trailer and just various maintenance, but for the most part, you're not spending money until you're making money. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it, it really is was a great model. Um but I mean, the opportunity came to us, and it was just kind of like we couldn't lift, look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> okay, so what was yeah. like you said the opportunity? It just landed in your lap. Like explain yes. that. Like then. I mean, literally. <laughs> okay, so you didn't go. You were like, oh, let's go and experiment. Mm-hmm. It was just like we were. I wouldn't say regulars at the Bean and Grape, but it was our local bar. If we couldn't go to the Blue Door, run over there, have a drink. And John at um, Midland Meat Co. Half Acre, he used to manage them, and he. Would always come and talk to Ryan and us and and I and uh, me. Sorry, <laughs> he would come and talk to us and just like, hey, do y'all wanna? We're about to, or we're looking for a seller or a buyer. Sorry, we're looking for a buyer. About a year before we bought it, we were just joking around like, yeah, John, we'll we'll buy it from you. What's the number? Like, he gave us the number and we just kind of went from there. And I'm like, we're not gonna buy this bar, but we're just gonna play <laughs> yeah, around. <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah, we don't have money. We just bought another and... house. Like, we don't want to go in debt. That's what our number one thing was. We don't want to go in debt for our company. Yeah. Um, we're going to, you know, save our money, spend our money, never go in debt. Well, cool. <laughs> well. Uh, Here we are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, <laughs> famous no, last week. Yeah. <laughs> so we played around with the idea. And then, again, he kept coming after us. And we're like, John, I don't know. Sat down with Ray. The numbers were good. Mm-hmm. We weren't gonna buy Bean and Grape. We were just buy. It's a, it was an asset sell. Yeah. Just yeah. buying the spot, renting the spot. Um, yeah, because I mean, so much of it was that. That was the other thing too. It was like, yeah, you know, there's a lot that goes into a build opening out. a bar. A, yeah, build out. I mean, if you're starting from scratch, we we looked at a place down here downtown, and um, just because you know the way pricing is, anyways, it was you know it was 
three fourths the size and twice the price, you know, and, mm-hmm. and but also it was literally we would be starting from scratch, and it was yeah. just like no kitchen. The grape either. was already yeah already had the kitchen. The w- uh, aside from the decorations, I mean the layout is exactly what we wanted. For people who haven't been to Hoop and Barrel yet, talk a little bit about it. Neon Kitten in Dallas. It was a new bar. I don't remember when they opened. Mm-hmm. Definitely something that was an inspiration for me. And then San Antonio vibes. He loves San Antonio, and I love the colors and just the art. Um, so we kind of just wanted to brighten up the place and put some cool art in there. And Audrey, I love I love her art, so I wanted her to do a beautiful mural on that brick. That brick was waiting for that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it was just know, empty, it, you know? She did a great job. She did. We, yeah. just, we didn't even know what to... I was just like, <laughs> I want... I showed her a couple of things, and I was like, I'm not picky. I'm not going to be stressed out about this. Just go ahead and do what you want to do. And just I like did one. like the color palette. And yeah. 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 Nice. Just, yeah. And the saying on the wall. Oh, yeah. We wanted the phrase that I'll stop the world and drink with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is a, that is a running theme in our place, I would say, is music. Uh, mm-hmm. Me and her, I mean, fell in love over music. Um, yeah. And and uh, and our chef, uh, Clint, I mean, when we worked at Abuelos, it was always a very I mean, we we're always talking about music. Music is a big you know, part yeah. of the food, the drinks. We try. I try and throw the puns in where I can without being too ham-fisted about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's and it's and it's tapas. It's you know, don't don't go to Hoop and Barrel expecting like a whole yeah yeah, yeah. like no a steak full and on potatoes. dip. Yeah, okay. So yeah, exactly. small plates, custom cocktails. Yeah, custom cocktails. Okay. Yeah. Um, the uh, the food, um, let's say like Asian fusion. Uh, yeah, inspired. Asian fusion a little bit, um, but really it's it's kind of just whatever sounds good, and that's what sounded good for a while was just a bunch of Asian fusion yeah. stuff. Yeah. When we made the first menu, like the little, little bow wows, the we got the the wagyu beef from Middle of Meat Co, um, the short rib, and um, and you know in the bow bun, and that you know, but yeah, exactly, it just comes with a couple of them. Um, the whole idea is just you know you munch on something while you're having a drink, and if you want some more, you just order some more. You know, we I think we've we always want to open a bar that's how we like to go when we're out of town, especially mm-hmm. um, this. That's what we do. I mean, that when we went to the Neon Kitten in Deep Ellum, we stayed we from stayed three stayed to eleven p.m. Three to eleven, and we probably tried everything on the menu. Yeah, wow. and it was just a lot of small bites and a lot of great drinks. How are you marketing to get in new customers, and then how are you you know converting these customers into loyal you know Regular. regulars? Yeah. I feel like, yes, every day is a struggle to be creative and trying to bring in that new clientele. I think Erica at the Blue Door is amazing at it. Mm-hmm. I need to be like her one day. I need to grow up. <laughs> she's, doing, she's doing a class. A yeah, master class. Yeah. class. Um, I think just trying to provide good drinks and... Right now, at least. Very As, word of mouth is it very me. word of mouth and, and Instagram again? Yes. It's word of yeah. mouth. And, I mean, honestly, our clientele that has came in, and they're just like, they the repeat customers tell their friends, word of mouth. Yeah, yes. we, we did get lucky that we started out fairly strong, aside from our first brunch. That's the only, like, oh negative Oh, my gosh, I thought that was going to break us. Oh, gosh, our first brunch. Uh, did not go as planned no. and you know we got some negative reviews anybody who said anything nice was being polite yeah, uh, it but, was bad. but since they, I mean we literally pivoted in the next week we did better and we haven't had an issue since but um, she's being too modest uh, like the pictures the drinks that she shares and she I mean like my whole idea is I'm like okay we'll do a new drink menu like you know every few months or so something like that maybe you know seasonal ish kind of thing mm-hmm. um and then she's just like pulling these new delicious drinks out of nowhere, and she's like, "Well, I don't want to wait to the next menu. Here's a picture of it, and we're gonna start <laughs> doing it." Uh, to, uh, I just I just stocked the bar with the syrup it needs. We're making that drink this week now. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna put it in the system, and here we go. It's not just one person; it's a whole, you know. Yeah. And so everybody kind of helps bring that clientele, and the regulars just keep coming back because of everyone there. Yeah. Um. So it's not just me or him. It's Everyone that's working yeah. there. And it's, you know, when you have somebody that's not just there to be an employee, like they're there to share the dream. Because mm-hmm. I've noticed, I mean, I, I started seeing stuff pop up, you know, hoop and barrel posts or, you know, the tagged in. And I'm like, that's not, me. that's not my wife. I was like, it's never me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my wife. And it's it's Kat or uh, Chelsea. They're they're sharing it to their own group of friends. Yeah. You know, they're they're yeah. taking it. We didn't ask them to do that. They're taking it upon themselves mm-hmm. to share pictures of drinks to, you know, entice people and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And 
I I mean, I think it's it's rare in Midland just in general to have people that will even work for you for like any amount of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, as you can see from any restaurant, I mean, it's hard to keep people, but to have people that really want to help you succeed is yeah. is just I mean, it's beyond words, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I could probably hit you with a thousand more marketing question just because I'm curious, especially especially in a market that is, you know, it is saturated and people do yeah. have options, you know what I mean? And I think Midland is unique in that, you know, word of mouth is strong both ways, yeah. right? But I think at, at some point, you know, sort of that, um, that new car smell rubs, you know what I mean, washes away. And yeah. I'm, always, I'm, I'm always interested in what businesses or business owners are going, what their plan is to you know, continue staying relevant. And especially when, you know, when they're looking at, well, our, you know, our social media is strong, but that could change in an instant too, right? The different algorithms and things like that. Again, we, we really appreciate you coming in. So make sure you go to Hoop and Barrel uh, for tapas and amazing cocktails. And if you have an event um, brewing up or you just want to hang out in the backyard and have bartending service, (laughs) pops and bubbles. Um, Appreciate it. Thanks again. Hey, thank you all so much for having us. So we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye. Bye. Boom. Done.